So I'm now here at the e-vehicle power station with Tanichi, who's the manager of this uh, e-vehicle power station. So we're going to start with the older technology, which is a lead-acid based electric vehicle. This is almost like a, a bus or a jeep, right? It's, like a it's really a shuttle, a shuttle. that uh, is being utilized for different transport purposes. Okay. It can uh, transport 14 people, 14 people. Uh, plus the driver. And how many of these are on the road right now or in service somewhere? Well, within Morocco, within uh, Morocco. there are four shuttles that are running. Okay. But uh, nationwide, there are around 134 electric shuttles that are ready. Okay. Uh, and this allows you to test out electric vehicles in general, right? Yes. And chargers and different technology that Correct. you'd like to roll out. Correct. Okay. So, oh, there's another example of another shuttle that you want to make ah, there. Okay. So this is another shuttle. Yeah. This one looks a bit newer. Is it it's a newer? newer? Actually, the design for the for this shuttle was customized. Okay. Meraco in the olden times used to run the uh, bus service. Ah, okay. So this is called the Trendia, the Meraco okay. Trendia. Trendia. So we basically customized this to look like the old uh, Trendia. Of ah, the, okay. And you can see the lead acid batteries in here, right? Correct. So, so basically is this all of the batteries, or is this just one set? Uh, this is one set one out set. of four. Uh, ah, okay. Out of four, there are sixteen batteries that are powered. Okay. In this. And what's the range on a vehicle like uh, this? A range of this vehicle type is a hundred kilometers. Okay, so it's a long range basically. It's pretty well, good. It's pretty good already. Especially it's for inside, a, if it's a shuttle yes, service, it's uh, not doing long. It should trips. be more it's just for back point, and forth, point, point, uh, point yeah. private compound. Okay. It really works and you have for the charge. charger over here. Can you okay. tell us about that? Yeah, we developed the charging pod as you call it, uh, for uh, uh, lead acid type uh, implementations. No? So as you can see here, this is similar to how a gasoline station works, a uh, fueling station. You basically have and can see how much electricity is coming in to the vehicle, uh, the cost per kilometer, and we thought of this as a, it can be used for commercial purposes. Okay. So we thought that uh, maybe if you sell this outside, it can cost it around 10 to 12 pesos per kilowatt hour. And then the total price that uh, has actually been has gone into the vehicle and you okay. can actually pay. Uh, because eventually as more uh, electric vehicles go out on the road, this right. is what we're going to see, right? It's not going to be the right. traditional gas station. It's yes. going to be charging pods like this. Precisely. Okay. If you would need uh, charging outside of your home, uh, people usually forget that uh, within their own homes or their commercial promises, you can charge your vehicle. they can actually charge their vehicle. That's it's true. that convenient. That's uh, true. So I was, um, when I was in the UK, I think probably about a year ago, right. I was able to drive the Nissan Leaf. Right. I don't know if that's yes, it. yes. And that. I was charging that at home also. It was a little bit slower, but if you if you actually own the vehicle, you can have a fast charger installed at home. Correct. So that's true, that's a good point. You don't have to use a charging station like this. Not you can also charge them yeah. at home. People just have range anxiety. They're used to have looking for gas stations. Which yeah. is why we have to provide facilities such as this yeah. to ensure them that they will have uh, charging anywhere they go. That makes but in sense. reality, the distance that is provided by these vehicles, yeah. they're more than enough. Yeah, most likely you're going to be able to do your day's business, get home and charge Correct. it with no problem, Correct. right? Okay. 100 kilometers from Manila will, will bring you already as far as Pampanga. And the, the nice north. thing about yeah. this is, unlike a gas vehicle, this isn't wasting power when you're sitting in traffic. Yes. So that's a big difference. Perfect. If you're yeah. not really moving, perfect you're for not the using Philippine, power. <laughs> Philippine yeah. conditions. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Now, can you show us a newer technology? Okay. okay. Well, sorry. Yeah, we, we you just have to walk a little quiet. Now, we had a little peek at this earlier, but now they've taken the cover off. So let's go and take a look. So we were right, it is the Tesla. And this is the only registered Tesla or the first registered? This is the first registered first Tesla. Registered there are Tesla. actually three Teslas already in the Philippines. Three Model S's. Mm -mm. I've seen one uh, Model X on the road as well. Okay. So there are probably around four units that are really running in the country. Even but they're if it's, uh, very unique at the moment. Yes. Very, yeah. I mean, I, I'm out of words because it's <laughs> such a stunning car. Right. It's really amazing. So the Tesla runs on a key pod, key, key fob, um, basically allows you to have access to opening the car, um, even opening the back. Wow. And, and I think also you can open the front, right? The front as well, yes. And if we open the front, we won't see anything. 
or will we? Well, you're supposed to see the engine, yeah. except the engine got stolen. <laughs> <laughs> so because this is an electric vehicle, of course, you can actually use this as a storage yes. area. Right. Wow. And how about the back? It's also yeah, maybe the maybe the engine is at the back. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. okay, and look, we have even more storage. <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing. In the US, uh, they put jump seats uh, oh, really? the in the Model S. So it, mm. uh, it has a capacity of seven people. Seven people, wow. Yeah. It's an amazing But it's a uh, uh, back facing, rear facing, rear facing uh, jump seats. seats. Mm. Mostly for children. Yeah. So no use for us. Uh, Not for here, adults. Yeah. And it's currently on charge, is that right? Yes, Sorry. it currently has charge. Uh, so this is how the charger works. Just have to press this. That's, that's a lot simpler than the Nissan Leaf that I reviewed. I had to because it has some locks on it and stuff, True. and I was I had a hard time getting the thing to go to actually like lock into place. Right. How easy is it on this okay, one? Let's see. So just put it in, just push, and then you'll see a green light coming in. That means the char car is charging. I can tell you that's a lot easier than the Nissan Leaf. But either way, both electric vehicles are great, but yeah, you can't beat a Tesla. Okay. And what's the range on this vehicle? This vehicle can do 300 kilometers. Wow, on a single charge. On a single charge, yeah. Uh, we've basically computed already how much it costs to charge the vehicle. Um, for the 300 kilometer range, it will cost around 600 pesos. Okay, and so how does that compare against gasoline? Kilometer. A gasoline engine usually consumes uh, 7.9 pesos per kilometer wow. so it's much cheaper to yes, run right. but of yeah, course you've got the same. initial investment of buying the car correct well with the excise tax coming in this is going to yeah. be cheaper <laughs> or oh, at least yeah. parity with uh, gasoline cars. yeah i hadn't considered so they're not increasing the excise tax on electric vehicles electric vehicles would be exempt from taxation well wow. so they're really trying to push for electric vehicles yes. and excise taxes would also affect uh, gasoline as well gasoline prices that's going to go up. increasing by six okay. pesos wow. uh, per liter so. It's going to be difference. parity with price and then cheaper to operate. So EVs... That's a big bonus for electric vehicles, a really big thing, bonus. Yeah, stunning car. Yeah, it, it, oh, it has the... Oh, sorry. Yeah, it has no this 21 inch wheels as well. Yeah, it was they're... supposed to come with a P85 model, but uh, for this model, we were able to get... Uh, we were able to uh, add them? Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty big. They're, yeah, they're pretty big. For a sedan style car. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Of course, it's perfectly clean because if you own a car like this, you're going to keep it absolutely <laughs> perfect. Well, the color helps. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's easier to yeah, uh, clean uh, and make, make appear that it's clean for a white car. And you were saying that on top of the roof, you've got solar and then somewhere yes, else you've got wind. Yes, we also wind for right? Yes. yes. And that, that power that you generate is being used to recharge to power this, car, this car as power well. This car. So it's basically a zero emission, zero pollution, zero carbon vehicle. And this is your first e-vehicle power station, right? Yes. This is um, our technical and uh, and our showcase as well to show people that it really works. People have an idea that uh, vehicles cannot be charged using electricity. We've improved technology already, you know? so from what you've seen as the charging yeah. for slow type of vehicle for lead acid, uh, later probably I can show you a fast charger okay. uh, that can charge this vehicle uh, in as short as 10 minutes at 80%. Wow, and this is lithium ion as well, This is right? lithium ion. So the batteries of the vehicle are actually um, in the, the chassis, yeah, in okay. the chassis of the vehicle. And, and as you mentioned, there was no engine. So the motor is actually at the rear uh, wheels. Okay. It's like an RC it's car. Motor. It's a hub motor, yes. Uh, uh, so it's really I didn't know that. Yeah. And something interesting about this handle is it doesn't pull out. It's got some kind of sensor on the inside. And when you go like that, it just unlocks and opens itself. So that's pretty interesting. I like that. So we're now inside and you've got this huge screen on the 17 inch. Tesla, 17 inch. And this is obviously used for uh, mapping and everything else to everything know more about there, the vehicle. Correct. And is this going to get you in trouble with the anti-distracted driving? <laughs> <laughs> or do you think you'll be okay? I think it's going to be, it's, it's the wave of the future. So how it can you the stop the future from happening? So everything is really controlled using this uh, capacitive uh, touch screen. Uh, so you basically can see here in, in an instant how much range you have. 
Uh, so currently it has 295 kilometers. That's a huge range. When I was driving the Nissan Leaf, it was around 80 or 90 miles. I'm not miles. sure that is in kilometers. Uh, 140. 140. So it's still uh, reasonable. 44. For, for yeah. an average person, I think it's okay, but Correct. it's not as impressive as this. And this is already the base model. Basically. So you can imagine how, how much longer the range of the newer vehicles are. Yeah. And as mentioned, it allows you to basically control everything about the car. In fact, there there are no analog controls anymore, mm. uh, with the exception of the, the indicators, the gear, yeah, uh, and the indicators and the, and mm -hmm. the gear. No? So, so everything is done through here. Everything here, even locking the car, even uh, opening the lights. Although mm. everything can also be put in auto, automatic, okay. yeah. automatic mode, so you don't really have to fiddle with anything as well. Uh, this does not have the autonomous mode as of yet, unfortunately. Ah, okay. That's would a have shame. To have I like that. That. Yes. <laughs> it would have been easier for us. Is that because us. they roll it out per country? Right. This is a 30, 2013 model. Okay. Uh, the, all, the autonomous models, as far as I know, came out 2015, 2016. Uh, so they didn't roll out a software upgrade or something like that for... Well, these, these vehicles don't have their uh, sensors and the radars. Ah, that they're necessary right. to of run course, autonomous. Of course, of yes. course. That makes sense. You can't just upgrade the software if you don't have the sensors. Correct. Okay. But the over-the-air uh, upgrades mm -hmm. are available for this car. Okay. Yeah. So whenever there are necessary upgrades, they're gonna for example, them. you want to increase the range of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this has a 60 kilowatt battery. Okay. But um, there is a software upgrade for a fee mm -hmm. that will allow you to maximize it at 75 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. So that will actually uh, increase the range of the vehicle. So it's it's a software limitation that they added originally of the battery because you're not upgrading the battery, right? It's still yeah, the same battery. Yes. Okay, so give it that. Uh, you can actually, uh, yeah, yeah. Car door. Let's uh, have a little look around. This is my second Tesla that I was that I've ridden in. The first one was in Hong Kong, and surprisingly, it was actually as an Uber. If you can believe that. And of course, there's no noise from the Correct. engine because no there noise. is no engine. So you ready? Yes. Whoa! <laughs> so that is the torque that's coming out. Yeah, when you put your foot down on this thing, it really goes, right? It's instantaneous.